In this video, we'll define the nearest neighbors and approximate nearest neighbors problems. We'll also give a first few attempts to try to solve these problems, although we won't quite get there in this video. The nearest neighbors problem is defined as follows. Suppose we're given as input some set S, which is a set of size n uh, that lives in R to the d. Given some point x in R to the d as input, our goal is to find the y in S that's closest to x in Euclidean distance. So in this picture, that would be this y. The nearest neighbors problem is a pretty fundamental problem that shows up in a lot of different applications. Our first try to solve this problem might be the following algorithm. Given a query point x, we just loop through all of the different y's in our set s, we compute the L2 distance between x and y, and we just return the closest y that we find. That algorithm is perfectly correct, and it runs in time big O of n times d. We have to loop through all n points, and then we have to do some computation with d-dimensional vectors to compute the distance. So that's great, but we might ask, can we do better? In particular, we might wonder if we can do it in sublinear time, little o of n. Okay, as stated, this is an impossible task, since we have to at least look at all of our n input points, so we couldn't hope to do it faster than big O of n, but a sublinear time algorithm might be possible if we allow preprocessing. That is, we're going to slightly change our problem statement to the following. Once again, we have a set S of size n, subset of Rd, and now we get to spend some time ahead of time to construct a data structure that hopefully doesn't take up too much space, and that can answer queries of the form, given some x in Rd, find the y in s that's closest to x. So that is, before we query, we get to construct our favorite data structure, which can depend on the set s. And then at query time, we're queried about some vector x that goes into the data structure, and out comes the right answer, y. And then maybe later we want to make another query about some x prime, Maybe the correct answer there is y prime, and if we put that into our data structure, we'll get out the right answer. If this is our goal, it turns out that this is possible. So to see a simple example of y, let's consider the one-dimensional case, where d equals 1. In that case, here's a simple solution with a sublinear time algorithm. Our data structure is just going to be a sorted array of the data. Since the data is one-dimensional, this makes sense. Our query algorithm is just going to be binary search. So this results in a data structure slash algorithm that uses space, big O of n, and query time, big O of log n. So this is pretty great. In particular, using space big O of n is pretty much optimal. You can't do better than big O of n storage since you need to store all of the points in S to begin with. And query time big O of log n is much, much better than the query time of big O of n we had before. Our next question is, does this generalize to higher dimensions? It turns out that in higher dimensions, this problem gets a bit tricky. Here's a quick summary of what's known in table form. First, for comparison, Here's the straightforward algorithm that we already saw, the linear scan through all of the points. So this takes space big O of n times d, which is optimal, hooray, but as we saw, the query time's not great. Big O of n times d, we want something sublinear in n. There are various ways of generalizing the d equals 1 solution with binary search that we just saw, and indeed, you can get sublinear query time this way. You can get query time polynomial in d and logarithmic in n. If d is not too big, that's great. However, the curse of dimensionality really bites here, and it turns out that the storage for these sorts of algorithms is big, exponential in d. So that's not great. There are some other heuristics with optimal space, but again, in the worst case for large enough dimension, they tend to have linear query time. So the question is, in higher dimensions, can we get sublinear query time 
with space that's closer to big O of n times d than it is to n to the O of d. In order to overcome this curse of dimensionality, where the space required grows exponentially in the dimension, we can look at an approximate version of the nearest neighbors problem. This is called C approximate nearest neighbors. The problem is as follows. Once again, we have a set S of size n that lives in R to the d, and we want to construct a data structure that's not too big that can answer queries of the following form. Given some x in R to the d, let's suppose that x is here, we want to find, oops, this says find the y, this should be find any y, in S, so that the L2 distance between x and y is no more than c times the smallest distance between x and any point in the set. For example, if this point x is closest to this point here, and the distance is delta, then we can draw a ball of radius c times delta around x, and in the c approximate nearest neighbors problem, it's okay to return any of the points in this ball. This is a relaxation of the exact nearest neighbors problem, but this turns out to still be good enough for a lot of different applications, and also we can get much better algorithms and data structures. How can we solve the C approximate nearest neighbors problem? Well, inspired by a previous video, you might think to use johnson lindenstrauss transforms. That is, if our problem is the curse of dimensionality, why not use a JL transform to reduce that dimensionality? So let's see how that works out. First, let's let f, which maps r to the d to rm, be a johnson lindenstrauss transform, like we saw in the previous video. And let's say let's choose one with parameter epsilon equals a half. That means that we can choose m to be big O of log n. Then the idea is, let's use one of those exact nearest neighbor algorithms that we saw in that big table on the previous slide. If we want sublinear time queries, let's use the one that had space n to the big O of m and query time m to the big O of 1 log n. So our data structure is just going to be whatever data structure that solution would use, but applied to the points f of y for y and s then our query algorithm will just be use that query algorithm. So that's a reasonable idea. How well does this do? The space that we need is going to be n to the big O of m, which since m is big O of log n is going to be n to the big O of log n. An expression of this form is called quasi-polynomial in n, which is very fun to say. And the query time is going to be m to the big O of 1 times log n, which is equal to something polylogarithmic in n. Okay, so at least the query time is sublinear, that's great. The amount of space used, well, this is better than n to the big O of d if d is really big, but it's still not great. Ideally, we'd want something linear in n, not quasi-polynomial in n. So let's put kind of a mediocre, not quite happy face there. Can we do better than that? It turns out we can, and in class we'll see a way called locality-sensitive hashing. So thanks for watching this video, and see you in class!